So I'm not far away from 50,000 subscribers. If you guys want to support me, please do like this video and share it. It would only encourage me to bring you more content. Now let's get into this one. So I never really wanted to learn about Tudor as much as now. This is the reason why I now want to pay more attention to Tudor. I mean, just look at this guy. How could you not want this? How could you not like this? It's an insane value for money. I thought in the beginning it was big. I was like, you know what? It's not for me. This is not going to work. But trying it on the wrist, man, this is such a beautiful watch. I never really wanted a Tudor in my entire life as much as now. This is the one release that I truly like. And let me tell you, you don't want this watch because you want a Daytona. That's not the mindset for it, right? That's not how you should be thinking. You want it because you like to do stuff, meet people, work, work out without thinking too much what's on your wrist. I mean, for the price point, just over 5K, this is an unbeatable offer. This is the slimmed down version of the old stainless steel Black Bay Chrono, a vintage-ish design and cues that are really taken from the early Rolex Daytonas. That's what I think. The reference for this watch is M79360N-0002. I mean, reference numbers couldn't just get more complicated than that. I don't even know how you'd remember it. And yes, it's thicker and bigger than the Daytona, but you know what? I think this release brought Tudor out of the shadows and I absolutely love it. So this Tudor can be more expensive. It can costs more. If someone in Geneva wanted this watch to be more expensive, it's very easy to do that because the build of this watch is definitely next level. It deserves that in my opinion. It's definitely possible and it's obvious. It's for the quality. It's for this build quality from finish to function to anything. Everything you get with this watch deserves more to be completely honest. I mean, we're happy with the price being at where it's at right now. A lot of other brands give you less for more than this. And this is, this is, this can be more expensive in my opinion. I mean, all the new tutors to be honest, convey the same sense, right? This has potential, man. I mean, you're talking about 200 meters water resistance, a black tachymeter insert, an in-house caliber, that is of course the caliber MT5A13 that is cost certified, that provides you up to 70 hour power reserve. I'm personally not a big fan of the riveted 3L16 bracelet, but let me tell you that the polish and satin finish with folding clasp and safety is truly a catch for the 5K and change price point that you pay. For a Swiss made Rolex chronograph, Sorry, I meant the Tudor chronograph, that is. But the point is that I'll take the riveted bracelet for that price. I mean, I don't know what you're thinking about this Tudor. A diehard Rolex fans will tell you, you know what, this is a, a poor man's Rolex. This is not a poor man's Rolex. This is a Rolex. It's made, built by Rolex. Yes, this is unmistakably a tool Rolex Tudor built watch. You see this across the case, pushers, bracelet, and clasp. Tudor's greatest strength today is basically channeling the classic Rolex watches, right? But with a twist of a modern touch to it. We've seen that, of course, with the 58 that took the inspiration from the company 7922 Submariner. We've seen that with the Pelagos. I think the Pelagos is absolutely original in terms of that modernization that Tudor had taken. The Pelagos once again with this modern chic design that is really a tool watch. And this is something that we really lack today from watch brands. There is nothing really that screams tool all over. Everything is just about luxury right now. And then again with this chrono, right? With this with this specific chrono. I mean, it kind of reminds you of the John Player Daytona. There is a Daytona called the John Player Daytona from the 70s era. Is considered to this date one of the rarest Rolex Daytonas. And it also has design cues from the 62 the Rolex Daytona that especially with the you know bigger pushers like the pushers really protrude out like on this one out and about formal occasions with family this is the tutor that gets the job done just slap it on your wrist and forget it and you know what when you peek at it again you find things to appreciate whether it be the dial color the case the pushers everything about it will eventually grow on you at least that's from my experience so trying both the previous generation and this generation I can tell you it's a less bulky wearing experience when I first saw this watch I was like yeah whatever Ever. But then again, wearing it on daily basis for the past two weeks, go and try this watch on because it's not what you think, right? It's not it's not the same thickness that everyone's talking about. It's it's not that bad. Honestly, on my wrist, I absolutely appreciate 
the fact that it's not as thick as the previous one and it's not as slim as the Daytona. This is a very nice, original, beautiful design. This new Black Bay Chronograph in stainless steel comes, of course, at 14.4 mm thickness, according to Tudor, but it wears a little bit even thinner than that, in my opinion. Pop by the boutique, ask them the question if you can try this watch on. It has this charm in person, even over videos and pictures. I'm beginning to appreciate it, is what I'm trying to say. It's just the right size. But anyways, here's what I've come to in terms of measurement. It's about 41 mm in diameter by 14.2 mm thickness by 49.9. So basically I nearly 50 mm lug to lug. It's not a small watch, but again, it makes a really good wear for those who have a good medium to large wrist size, right? So I think Tudor absolutely smashed it there. So in terms of the two dial options, the black and white, of course, usually black dials make watch cases look slimmer, smaller something like that. But somehow on these chronographs, right, when I've seen the black, I don't have it with me in person here. It actually made the watch look bigger, right? So this contrast between the black tachymeter and the white dial was the go-to if you wanted, you know, that uh, slimmer wear, I guess, right? Which is which is strange considering it's a white dial. Both look good and each read so legibly, but the Panda, in my opinion, also has the goods in terms of reading the time at a glance, right? Because of that contrast. I actually think the white makes the watch look smaller than the black variation in this case. It's a 100% casual, modern, vintage, inspired sport watch is what it is. Damn, that was really mouthful, right? But you, you got the point. And I think for the price point as well, you can't really go wrong with this. The look and feel, the wearability, I like the white dial more than the black in my opinion. I think those dials are really, really cool. I actually like it very much. I'm not sure if this is a temporary Tudor high that I'm on, but I've been on it for the past two weeks. And every time I wear this watch, I absolutely see something new, something to, new to appreciate that is, I don't know. I think this is a fun watch. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be impossible to get. This is not one of the easiest ones from Tudor that you can get, but you know what? You don't have to battle your way through for a Daytona. Of course, the preference is a Daytona if you can get it at retail. But again, this is, this is a really good option. I would definitely pick it. So let me know in the comment section down below, how do you feel about the Tudor chronographs? Let me know your preference, whether you like the black or the white. I would love to go through your comments. I've got a couple of unboxing basically to do for this month. So look out for my next videos. Catch you guys in the next one. Take care.